Recording in progress. Good evening, and welcome to the Arts Commission regular meeting of February 2nd, 2023. I'd like to call this meeting to order at 6 p.m. And uh, we'll start the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance by Commissioner Mann. Thank you, Commissioner. All right, the next order of business is roll call. Ms. Viteri. Okay. Commissioner Dare Darian. Here. Commissioner Lucia. Present. Commissioner Mann. Present. Commissioner Ochoa. Commissioner Zuckerman? Present. Vice Chair Wondercheck? Present. Chair Ashendorf? Present. We have forum. Thank you very much. All right, the next item on the agenda is uh, public comment. This is a time for the public to address the commission on items not on this evening's agenda. Comments will be limited to three minutes. Uh, Ms. Viteri, is there anyone on Zoom who would like to address the commission? There are no members on Zoom. All right, thank you very much. And seeing no one in the council chambers, we will uh, close public comment. The next item on the agenda is commissioner comments. And first, we'd like to welcome our newest commissioner, Mr. Derdarian. And if you would like to introduce yourself and take a few moments, we would welcome that opportunity. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Fisher Dardarian, and uh, I run the Roger Scruton Legacy Foundation for my full-time job. Uh, we support the arts and culture, uh, furthering the legacy, as we further the legacy of Sir Roger Scruton, the English philosopher, one of the leading as uh, aestheticians, which is the philosophy of beauty uh, within the last hundred years. And so uh, we, we try and carry his legacy forward. And being a resident of Costa Mesa, uh, I thought I would love to try and bring my experience uh, in that work uh, to this wonderful city uh, and support the many efforts that the council is doing and, of course, this wonderful Arts Commission is doing. Uh, I'm just delighted to be uh, the seventh member and hopefully fill out this body, uh, this historic body, nonetheless, um, and uh, support the very good efforts that are happening here. So it's a, a delight to join you all tonight, and I'm very grateful and honored to uh, be in this role. Thank you. Well, welcome again. Thank you very much. All right. Vice Chair Wondercheck, comments? I'm going to take, where is it? Is one microphone on? Excellent. I'm going to save my comments towards the end. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Mann. Um, I will also save my comments towards the end. All right. Commissioner Zuckerman. Good evening, thank you. I have two things I wanted to talk about today. First, I wanted to talk a little bit about how I know that people in Costa Mesa care about art. And uh, I'm gonna give you some statistics. So I'm gonna use the Orange County Museum of Art as my measurement. So in the first 90 days that the Orange County Museum of Art has been open, we welcomed 92,302 visitors. Mm. Just for some context, when the museum was in Newport, uh, we saw 20,000 visitors a year. So we have in 30, sorry, 90 days, the equivalent of four years of attendance. Um, and why we care about that is, of course, we're based in Costa Mesa, and of our visitors, 5,284 of them live in Costa Mesa. So that comprises 5.68% of our visitor demographics, and I think that is really exciting. I have two other things I want to say. Uh, the 
The second is um, that we are opening the museum again with two exhibitions, the Daniel Arsham Show, Wherever You Go, There You Are, and 13 Women, Variation 2, on Tuesday, the 14th of February. And we are saying, find your new crush at the Orange County Museum of Art. And we are doing a public opening from 8 p.m. to 12 midnight. Daniel is doing a book signing and a signing of objects at 8.30, but this is, again, free and open to everyone. We do ask that people RSVP, and you just go to the website, www.ocma.art, and again, free and open to the public from 8 to midnight. It's a great place to bring a date, I've been told, and I've witnessed, and uh, so it's fun that it's opening on Valentine's Day. And the last thing I wanted to share is a new initiative that I'm hoping uh, we might collaborate with the city of Costa Mesa on. And um, since the city of Costa Mesa is the art, the city of the arts, um, we've decided that on Costa Mesa's day, which is 92626, right? Um, so September 26, 2026, um, we're going to launch and open a major exhibition of uh, commissioned sculptures all across certainly the museum, um, but my proposal is that it is all across the city of Costa Mesa, and we have plenty of time to plan it, um, but that's my, that's my BHAG for today. I thought of it in the shower, and uh, I brought it up at the Arts Commission, so thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Commissioner Ochoa? All right. Uh, Commissioner Lucia? I have no comments at this time. Thank you. All right. Uh, I have a few things I'd like to share. First of all, congrats to uh, staff for a, another spot on spotlight. Um, very pleased to see that also on page 23 for all of you out in the public. Um, there's, a, there's a page exclusive to the arts. And one of the things that I hope in the near future that that will spill out to more pages, Miss. Uh, Ms. Garner, it was a, it's a nice start, but we want more in that spotlight. Also, I did uh, attend the uh, artist reception for Marion Vale at the Costa Mesa Senior Center, and it was really exciting to see a young artist with some something very different for the senior eyes, and more exciting than that, she's coming back next week and teaching a class to the seniors on collage making. And... Uh, they're really excited to have her there. I think congrats are in order. Uh, Commissioner Wonderchek's daughter may have been singing at the city council meeting last month, and she has a lovely voice, so congratulations. Um, also, I'd like to acknowledge Supervisor Katrina Foley, who brought in $191,000 to Newport Mesa Unified School District's uh, music department, including a $41,000 piano for Costa Mesa High School. So there's some good things going on from the supervisor's office. Um, Director Mentor, Ms. Thomas, Ms. Garner, Ms. Villasenor, it was good to see you at the council study session and hear all about parks and the arts, and we're really looking forward to what that means in the budget in the future for the city of the arts. So um, thank you very much for that really wonderful presentation. And um, finally, Ms. Garner, this this agenda is what we've been waiting for. We are now on the precipice of good things. So we're lo really looking forward to more policies, more procedures, and that coming our way. So thank you very much. With that, we will go to old, mis old business, uh, the minutes from December 1st. If I could chime in really quick. For our new commissioner, who wasn't at the last meeting, he, you are still allowed to vote on the minutes, even though you weren't present. Thank you, Director Minter. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Can I just say something real quick with yes, the minutes? Um, I did talk to Chair Ashendorf, and we have a few edits on six that I just wanted to acknowledge verbally that we will be fixing. Thank so, you. Yes, of course. So on page six, 
There's a arc crawl instead of an art crawl, which I don't think anyone said arc crawl, so we'll change it to art crawl. And then um, we'll kind of clean up the paraphrasing a little bit, and then the date was also incorrect on the bottom. So I just wanted to acknowledge that, that we'll, we'll edit that before posting permanently. Thank you very much. Then um, uh, if there are no other comments, then I, I'd like to make a motion to adopt the, uh, the minutes as uh, corrected by uh, staff, is there a second? second? All right. It has been seconded by uh, Vice Chair Wondercheck. Call for the question. Excuse us, we're having technical difficulties. One moment. Okay, so at this time, the votes have to be manual, so I'll be calling on everyone. Um, Commissioner Dare Darian? Aye. Commissioner Lucia? Aye. Commissioner Mann? Aye. Commissioner Ochoa? Aye. Commissioner Zuckerman? Aye. Vice Chair Wondercheck? Aye. Aye. Chair Ashendorf? Aye. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. All right, the, we'll move on to new business. Item number one Arts Grant Review Guidelines. Ms. Garner. Yeah, so um, just a couple of things to note before I open this up for discussion for all commissioners. Um, previously, as kind of mentioned with the examples of the previous um, arts grant application, uh, the arts grant program was funded by money the Cultural Arts Committee raised from Art Venture and the Utility Box Art Program. Um, and currently, as per the Arts and Culture Master Plan, uh, the program will be continue is con currently funded and will be continually funded by tax dollars. So we kind of you know created a new application. We had our legal team review it. We also created. Um, a new agreement for this. So um, the reason for this is really just to collect data. We're using city money, so I just want to be really responsible in how we are, you know, collecting this data and keeping it consistent. And we, I also try to align the mission and the vision to the arts and culture master plan. And open to edits and suggestions. I'm a little silo here in this department, so I'm happy to hear things from all of you who I know have probably are really familiar with grants and applied for grants and things like that. So. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to mention that I also discussed with Chair Ashendorf is that th I'm really trying to make this program kind of, a, you know, a training program for new grant writers. You know, this is local government art should really be accessible for people to kind of apply and learn how to do these things well. So that's kind of a lot of the way I approached it. So if you have questions around, I'm happy to talk about that more. Um, but yeah, you know, wanted to keep accessible, but also I do need paperwork. So <laughs> just a little bit about that. And then also um, I will say that once we get this document finalized, we'll also translate it into Spanish as well to continue on with the accessibility. And I think um, we'll just open for comments yeah. if anyone has suggestions for edits for the document. And I hope you all got to take a look at it. Yes. Look at that. Thank you. I have a question. I have a question. All right. Um, with the award amount, is that, it says the total funding available for the fiscal year is 5,000. Is that per person or that, that's the full amount? Baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It, that's ta but that is tax dollars. So I think, you know, we were having to raise the money for this every year. So. You know, every year we can make an ask and then, you know, city council will respond and how they want to fund things along with their finance department. But just, I'm aware and I'm an advocate for the arts. Okay. <laughs> um, then my other question would be, well, comment, is uh, should we leave it as a maximum award amount up to 2,000? Because if you only have 5,000, maybe we state the amount of people that would be able to be eligible for it. I'm not sure, but 
that's what made me think, oh, they must mean 5,000 per person if it's, but anyway. <laughs> but we, can, yeah, that, so that's, that's my comment slash question. Yeah, um, and I would say along those lines, because we're trying to spend this money in this fiscal year, which is why I was kind of okay with making them a little larger. And you know, it's, it's hard to have small grants when you put a lot of time into things. Mm -hmm. So I really wanted to have something that was a little substantial that was really gonna make a difference for a project. Mm -hmm. And the fiscal year will end June 30th. And so I'm really kind of just trying to get, and we'll have it, you know, we'll have more starting in July. So this is kind of just, you know, I, I was hired just about a year ago, so I've just been trying to get things in order, and so I just thought for this one. But absolutely, moving forward, we could restructure, you know, amounts and things like that based on what we have. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Are there other questions or comments by commissioners? Uh, first, we'll go to Commissioner Mann. Hi, um, yeah, I was wondering, um, are we responsible or should we be looking to figure out how to raise funds for more art as commissioners or is that um, you know, part of the position or is that not part of the position? I'm not sure exactly where we would stand on that. Um, I, I would say that's not the Arts Commission's role. And Jason, do you wanna speak to that fundraising? At this point, it hasn't been assigned as a task of the Arts Commission. I think historically, the, the events or activities that the Arts Committee put on was a slightly different role. I think advocacy to the City Council to support a, a larger grant program is, I think, the most appropriate action at this time. So that's uh, what my recommendation would be as opposed to you know acting more of along the nonprofit type line. Okay, so it's getting more grant money having more grant writing and grant writers available to make the fund slush, whatever it is larger. I think to create a pool of funds on an annual basis, and I think one of the ways that the commission can do that is, you know, with the, like, like Lorette said, it was baby steps, mm -hmm. um, you know, and show just the good that can come from the smaller donations and yet how much greater impact a larger donation can be. So the, the current funding source for the, for the arts and culture master plan is tied to, uh, you know, the, the measure for cannabis tax, you know, something that we do hope to keep growing, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't explore other opportunities, whether it be general fund or, you know, there are gonna be other proposals brought before the commission uh, with regards to, um, you know, taxes or, or, or fees for development that can also contribute to, uh, a greater sum of money to the commission that, you know, can be more, more helpful um, and, and more broad. So I think starting small, proving that it can really help and then, you know, I think your interactions with council pushing, you know, the value of this grants program would go a long way. Thank you. Uh, Com Commissioner Ochoa. Oops, sorry. Wrong one. Thank you. Um, hi, yes. Um, I, there was a line on, um, I don't sure, um, but it, it said successful projects. Um, I thought it would be better wording if it was criteria, project criteria um, mm -hmm. rather than successful, just so it doesn't imply some kind of value statement um, to those projects, um, whether selected or not. Um, and there was another item For the applicants, if there's, there's a written requirement to describe the project, um, I'm wondering if we should have a word count limit. <laughs> and I believe those are all my comments at the moment. Thank you. Commissioner Zuckerman. Thank you. It looks great. And um, I like the larger grant amounts, you know, particularly because I think in um, the early years of the programs, we really want people to be able to produce something successful, right, or effective or whatever language around that, but, you know, that are easily to document, too, um, so that we have information for next year um, and to be able to show, you know, what it is, like the impact that the grants are making. Um, so I think, you know, if you have smaller grants of not that much money, then it's hard to 
have them be as measurable in terms of the impact that we're having. The only question that I have is about the um, scoring information, the scoring rubric, and um, maybe it's just me, but I didn't understand necessarily um, the categories along the horizontal top, the emerging grants writer, the established grants writer, the exceptional grants writer, and how the points were um, given, and also if the uh, one, two, three, four, five categories or evaluation are all weighted equally. That is definitely up for discussion. It's fairly arbitrary from my end, you know, just kind of coming up with something as a draft. Yeah. So I'm open to discussion if you think there's a, you know, a, a better way to do that. And then as to the um, the emerging grants writer, I think it's basically just what I meant by it, and it is something we'll just kind of use internally, is really just, I think, you know, a lot of times people apply for grants, they don't necessarily have a lot of experience, but it doesn't mean their projects are, should be discounted completely. So I, I think it was just kind of a way to look at it, like a viewpoint, like let's, you know, maybe they didn't write it because they haven't done it before and the points aren't there. So, but again, it's not something that needs to stay. It's just something I think for me that was like a reminder, like when people, you know, apply the grants. Yeah. Yeah. So my perspective on that would be to, to leave that verbal maybe because even whoever your evaluators are, they might have uh, emerging established or exceptional experience in reviewing grants. So you have to kind of balance, right? Like who's giving the feedback with their own experience or, or whatnot. And I, I might also um, just add a category at the bottom for like, um, like a passion vote, right? Like if someone on your panel is like, this is the very best one, um, you know, that, that, that gets weighed more than maybe like a, like a scoring matrix where you're looking at the difference between like 3.7 and 4. Point, you know, one or something like that. You know, it might be more significant if someone's like super passionate about something. Thank you. Um, I did have a, a question for you, Ms. Garner, and that is on your timeline. Can you, can you tell us how you are going to um, reach out to the community to, put to, to assemble this panel for, and this is one time only, or will every time we have a grant process coming up, will it be the same panel? How are we going to engage the community? How do you see that? Yeah, so um, annually it'll be different panels. So we'll ask, you know, an arts commissioner and perhaps, you know, someone who works in education, someone who works in the arts. So we'll kind of gather together people annually. And I will, you know, the, the grants program will be annually. It won't be kind of multiple times a year. It'll be once, there'll be an application period and then there'll be a period of time when the projects are happening and the funding is going out, so. Perfect, that helps. Um, and uh, just while you're at eye level, Ms. Thomas, um, for the, the commissioners here who, who haven't seen the uh, Cultural Arts Committee um, grants program, we went from $500 to 2000 So this is a great step, and we hope that we can increase that exponentially in next year's budget. But thank you, because that was four years of developing a program that here we are talking about today. So thank you, Ms. Thomas. Uh, Ms. Viterra, is there anyone um, on Zoom who would like to, to address the commission? There are no members on Zoom. All right, thank you very much. Then we will close public comment. If uh, we don't have any other comments, I'm really excited to see this go forward. I thank you, Ms. Garner. I, th I think, um, I hope you've got a little bit of feedback um, from the commission to move forward with this. Um, it's really exciting. Will, will we be getting some kind of announcement so that we can assist staff in spreading the word um, to the community to, to seek illicit grants? Supporters. Yes, absolutely. I'll put it online and I'll get the, the online application ready and we'll get the Spanish translation. And once I kind of get that together, I'll definitely send an email out to all of you and I'll make the edits that were suggested, some great suggestions. So I appreciate that. Um, but I'm hoping middle of February. Yeah. 
perfect. All right, then, yes, Mr. M Director Minter. And this is something that can be brought back year to year if adjustments need to be made, mm -hmm. either to yes. the scoring or based on what, what a committee will learn or a panel will learn year to year. It, it is kind of a living, breathing document that can grow along with the, the hopefully the amount of funding if we needed to tailor the, the, the requirements kind of to meet what the applications that we're getting or whatever. So you know, this isn't your only bite at that apple. Yes, Commissioner Zuckerman. I think it would be great after the people received their grants and they made whatever they were going to make that they could come and, and maybe give an update to the commission directly. I think that would be a wonderful way also for the community that's watching along. I have no idea how many people, but um, I, I like to think that, you know, it's um, that's one of the other offer. One of the other things we can offer to the grant recipients is um, access to a broader audience and, and more awareness of, of their practice. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ms. Thomas. Thank you, Chair Ashendorf. I'd also like to highlight, um, per the master plan, the arts and culture master plan, um, it does state that we're going to continue to ask for increments of more additional money for this grant, so we're not stuck at $5,000. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does go through the budget process. It still needs to go through, you know, through council and approval process, but um, we're looking to go ahead and request an additional $3,000 in this upcoming fiscal year. And then as the master plan states, um, from there it goes to 10000 and ultimately in 20 actually it'd be the next fiscal year that we'd be encouraged to get to about you know, of course like 12,500 or potentially more mm -hmm. so just know we're not staying true to the, the 5,000 and continue to do that from year to year we'll continue to request um, increments of increases thank you Ms. Thomas all right then do we have a motion to uh, uh, Adopt this. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, there has been a motion by <laughs> Commissioner Zuckerman and second by Commissioner Ochoa. All right. For, for the record, just the, the motion should be restated verbally so that it can include the recognize the changes that were suggested by the commissioners. Okay, it is the recommendation of the Arts Commission to uh, approve this plan with the, to include the, the changes that were recommended by the Commission. All right, then we will call for the question. You may vote on your dais. I know we're, t we're trying. There we go. All right. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you very much. All right. The, we'll move on to item number two on tonight's agenda, the approval of the utility box art program applications that we have. Ms. Garner. Yes, so I just wanted to say that if I think this is a good time to open up for comments if anyone has comments about a specific box first We can we can approve them individually if there you know if there's one that we would not like to include But if there's no comments and everyone's in agreement that all are fine We can also approve them as a whole, but I'll let you all decide how you'd like to do that All right, do we have specific questions by the Commission? Just a, a note from staff. So I, I know we talked about it at our last uh, utility box art program approval. Um, we can treat it as a consent calendar where we approve all of them in one motion. Um, if a commissioner, before we get started in that discussion, would like to remove any singular box or if anyone would like to move to handle them one at a time, that would be another option all at right. the pleasure of the commission. All right, Commissioner Ochoa. Hi. Um, I was reflecting on comments that Commissioner Zuckerman mentioned in our last meeting, and upon further reflection, I do agree that um, giving more opportunities, um, one artist per box would be advantageous. Um, um, I noticed there are a couple, art one artist that has two box designs, and um, the box 
I have in question, let me see, is by the artist Craig Barker. And I was curious as to why all the female figures have no heads. That is the question for the artist, I think. Um, <laughs> so I will say, um, he had a box from, from over three years ago. I can't remember the date exactly. But what happens is once we replace them, we will offer the artist, since it's been so long, if they'd like to resubmit an application for it. Um, and then also, this is our first venture into the sponsorship boxes. So we do have multiples there because this is like a fundraiser. They're giving money. So in that sense, I don't mind because it's, it's hard to turn down extra funds for this. So um, that's why there's more for that. But I don't know if that was your question, Commissioner Ocho, or not. Commissioner Mann. Um, yeah, I was wondering, um, as far as the uh, first two, they say graphic designer, OC Fair. So it's, I'm just assuming usually when these are submitted, they're submitted by like a person, like the artist. And this seems, I don't want to say um, like by the fair, but it look, I don't know if it's an advertisement. It looks, is that weird? Um, I don't know. So I, I'm like, I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, I know the OC Fair did it, but I didn't know that, and I like them, and I like the veterans one, but it just seems like it's, but it just says graphic designer OC Fair, so to me that, I don't know who did it, it just seems like more an advertisement for the OC Fair than an actual, like, an artist submitting their work for a spot on a utility box. Um, the graphic designer is Melody Avina, but yes, she works for OC Fair. Um, and so when we do these sponsorship boxes, typically they do come from graphic designers, from businesses that are kind of designing them. Um, and we do ask that they only do, you know, about 20% of the box with some kind of advertisement since they're kind of paying for it in a way. So that's kind of what it's been done in the past. I don't know if, if you want to speak to any of that, Ashley, like how that was decided. For sponsorship boxes, um, one thing we really took into consideration, we didn't want them to turn into signs or into billboards. Um, the goal was is art, um, that is correct, but like Ms. Gardner said, um, a lot of times it's a graphic team, branding. Um, I know OCC in the past, it was their 60th, I think it was. Um, and so they did a big celebration and it was themed to their 60th theme. Um, so basically when we're doing sponsorships, it, it's typically in-house artists that design their artwork. And I, and I will say that um, OCC, this is their 75th, I think, this year, which is why they wanted to, to do all the boxes on their street, basically. So, yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to, um, so, okay, I didn't, so there's sponsorship boxes, and there's a certain amount of those, and then, um, okay, so... So is it the pleasure of the commission to address these individually based on uh, the commissioner's comment? As I mentioned, consent calendar. So what you can do is say, well, I'd like, you know, if one commissioner wants to pull box number nine or box okay. number seven only, then you can improve one through eight or one through six and nine and nine or however you would like to do it. If you want to discuss one um, individually, if you had a question about the images on box number nine and you want to put that on hold, that can be something that our staff get feedback from the artist as to why it was designed that way. I think on occasion we've had artists meet before the committee, right? Before the arts committee to discuss their work. I, I thought I remember us doing that with the arts committee. Not typically, no. Okay. Um, we sometimes work with the artists and, um, prior to the submission. Sometimes they seek advice, colors, um, ensuring they take up as much space as possible so there's not too much empty space. It does tend to lead to graffiti or um, activity that we don't want. So we work with them in advance, but not necessarily did they come in, um, not for at least this program. Hmm. Commissioner Mann. Sorry, yes, I, now I remember my question. Um, how long do these boxes usually stay up for? That's what it, especially if it's a sponsorship box, that period of time or? 
Yeah, so um, in the, the handbook that I worked with the Cultural Arts Committee on um, this last year, we just stipulated three years, but we do have some boxes that are much older that we're just kind of working through and trying to replace. I mean, I think we have some that have been up for like six or seven years, you know, they hold up pretty good, but we would like to kind of switch those out. So it's just a funding issue. We're just trying to kind of slowly get through them. Yeah. There are some that are taken down early from automobiles. Unfortunately, way more than you would expect, but we have lost some really cool boxes due to, to car crashes. So they do have to remove the box. And then once uh, our public works department reinstalls the box, you know, there's like a temporary box in place, it would be eligible for a, a new um, project. Thank you, Director Minter. Then would the commissioners like to pull any of these boxes from the uh, consent calendar? All right, seeing none. At this point, before we move on, do we go to public comment? Ms. Letere. There are no members on Zoom. Thank you very much. Then we close public comment. All right. Then, if there are no other comments from the commission, I would entertain a motion. I move to approve the utility box art submissions. Is there a second? Yeah, I second, sorry. Yeah. All right, it has been moved and seconded to approve the utility box art program applications. Uh, can we call for the question? You may vote on your dais. Thank you. There we go. There we go. Motion carries seven zero. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, the next item on this evening's agenda will be monthly reports as presented by our um, art specialist, Ms. Gardner. Okay. Does everyone have the presentation on their screen? Okay. So, uh, Art Crawl Experience is the first on there. Let me move my PowerPoint. Um, so we're very excited about this. This it's a pilot program. We'll do three stops of the, you know, during the night with the shuttle. We'll end up at ACMA and highlight their um, 13 women exhibit, which we're excited to see. And this will also be honoring Women's History Month for this art crawl. We will be taking 25 people and we'll have a registration process. And I should have a flyer and the website all ready to go by early next week. So Wonderful. we'll kind of have some of that up and ready to go. Um, and let's see, arts grants we just discussed. So, art Venture, we are planning on having Art Venture in our facility, the Norma Herzog Community Center. Sorry, that's a typo there, but city. Um, we're thinking we'd love to have the Juried Art Show up for about a week. Uh, we'll have a, a gala event and an award ceremony, ceremony like on the lawn with a large tent, so we'll make it really, really nice for that event. And then we'll have a community day the next day, and then we'll have the art up for about a week in the Norma Herzog Community Center so that people can come view it during the week. Um, as Chair Ashendorf mentioned, we have um, Marion Vale will be hosting a workshop on February 16th, and her artwork is up until April 30th. And we're excited to have her. She's really, she's really excited to um, host that workshop. And a couple things. We, I mentioned this before, but we are getting a youth art gallery, a new one, a new sign for the lobby space. The uh, renovation is on hold. And then we're also currently working on some commission pieces for the fifth floor to purchase some art to kind of create a civic collection for the city. And currently we have Michael Ward, who is a local Costa Mesa artist. He has some artwork on the fifth floor displayed. And let's see. And then also I would just mention briefly, I, 
I am thinking and we're talking about kind of doing a, a match artist to local business for exhibition spaces within the, within the city and that'll be something I'll bring back to the commission to kind of think through that so that we can kind of involve artists and business but be more of a facilitator and have an application process. So that's on my, my mind. And then um, free park performances, we are working with Pacific Symphony's Symphony on the Go program and we'll be hosting um, two performances, one in May, on May 27th at 1 p.m. And it'll be a brass ensemble with some patriotic tunes for Memorial Weekend. And then on June 18th, the, that will be at Balearic Community Park. And that'll be a 7 p.m. show, so a twilight show, and then we'll have um, a strings ensemble with um, soundtracks for Father's Day. So we hope those are really popular and we're hoping to get a lot of people out for those. Oh yeah, sorry about the slide, I missed it. <laughs> but you can see their, thank you Ashley, you can see the, um, their mobile stage that they bring around, which is really neat. So I'm looking forward to working with them. And public art and the utility box art program. We are still working on the art in public places, like the public art policy, and we are thinking we'll bring that back to the Arts Commission in April. We're still doing some edits. And we will also host um, Rick from Arts Orange County and Pat Gomez, who's the public art expert that we've used for this document. So she'll be, I think, on Zoom to kind of present and answer questions. Um, and let's see, also the Utility Box Art um, Program Handbook I am looking to see if we can possibly have a paint option, but I'm working with public works and transportation to see if that's something that would be feasible. So we would have kind of a couple options where artists could get a larger stipend and paint on utility boxes directly, those that feel comfortable and are, like to do murals and things like that. And then, you know, more graphic designers or people want to submit designs for the vinyl wraps. So I'll bring that back once I have more feedback from public works. And also, we're currently in the process of moving um, a donated public art piece called The Artist's Vision by artist James McDemus. Um, his mother donated that, what year was that, Ashley? A few years ago, 18? Yes, and so we have it in a location that we'd like to move, it's close to a fence, so we're kind of working on that, like giving it a platform, maybe some lights or something, but still in discussion as well, but just wanted to give everyone a kind of FYI for that. And that's it, that's all I have for tonight. Um, yeah, and thank you everyone for your comments. It's really helpful. Ms. Commissioner Zuckerman. So I just had a question about this idea of beginning a civic art collection for the city of Costa Mesa and um, wanted to just make sure that there's a collection criteria and that it comes to the commission for consideration and, and that it does include um, a gift acceptance policy? Yes, absolutely to all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Zuckerman. Any other comments uh, on staff report? I would, just a couple, Ms. Garner, our adventure moving to uh, the Norma Herzog for a week is really exciting. Year after year, putting up a, an art event one day and taking it down the next has been an extraordinary labor. And it's going to be wonderful to have that as part of the community, part of the West Side, um, for people to come for a full week with a great event as well. So thank you very much. Uh, we really are looking forward to that. Um, and I just wanted to make sure the comments you made about moving the uh, art that we have here on a City Hall property, I, I know that was very special for uh, Ms. McDemas. Some of us worked with her, and I hope, and we knew that, I mean, now we see with Snoopy and a lot of other events that occur on the City Hall lawn, it's in a precarious situation, but I hope you've had communication with her. Yes, absolutely. I met with her last week and we'll, we'll meet next week to kind of talk about it. So she kind of gave some input, which was great. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, seeing no other comments, then um, uh, Ms. Garner, uh, the Newport Mesa Unified School District art update. 
I don't have much to say other than what was given in the agenda. Um, I did attend a partnership meeting today with the district, so it's kind of neat to hear what they're doing. And we had a presentation by um, Anaheim schools with their music programs and the things they were doing. They talked a little bit about um, their big internship program and how they love to get more students into art internships, which I thought was really neat. So they're doing some really cool work there. They have some great data with how the arts, and they've always kept the arts. It never went away. And when we had kind of that, that time period when <laughs> it left some schools. So they were really, you know, their board was really conscious of that and they kept it going for Anaheim. So they've seen some really great growth in the arts because of that. So I do try to attend meetings occasionally to kind of bring back some stuff to the Arts Commission. Um, they have so many different meetings, so I'm trying to kind of pick and see which ones are good that we can kind of give input on. So, um, but yeah, that was a good one because it was great to kind of hear what they were doing. And also I wanted to say, I forgot the utility box art slide. I'm so sorry. I wanted to say there's three slides on that presentation with new boxes. So sorry about that. Oh, there they are. Ooh. Nice. Thank you very much. Additional commissioner comments. Commissioner Ochoa. Um, first, I'd like to thank Ms. Fairbanks for such a thorough newsletter. Um, I really appreciate all the effort um, she put into this. And um, secondly, um, Ms. Lorette, if you need um, you know, some assistance or, or an extra person to go to these um, Newport Mesa meetings, I'd be happy to attend since my child is in the Newport Mesa school system. Wonderful. Commissioner Lucia? I was just hoping if we could put the slide back up. Um, those were the boxes that we approved before, so they're already up. That's wonderful. Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to see. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> great work, everyone. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. On your dais at the top left corner, if you press presentation, you'll be able to see what's on the TV on your screen. I'd also like to chime in um, regarding the Newport Mesa School District Arts Update. Um, the TOSA, the Arts TOSA for the school district is Tamara Fairbanks. She's noted that this is a periodic update. Um, it's not really on a schedule yet. And she said it's um, evolving by mm -hmm. the day. So just know that it may come in different forms. But at this time, this is her way to compile everything Newport Mesa School District Arts into one document. and so. Um, everyone can enjoy and have dates and times and can enjoy the arts of our local youth. Thank you. Commissioner Wondercheck. So this month of February is Black History Month and I just wanted to share some different things that we could all be a part of or at least be aware of that's happening um, in our county. So the Orange County Heritage Council this Saturday, February 4th, will be putting on a Black History and Unity Parade. So that's happening in Anaheim at the Promenade, so pretty much right in front of City Hall. And it starts at 9 a.m. Uh, the parade actually starts at 10 and goes to 12 noon. And then there's booths and food and fun, lots of barbecue um, at the Unity Festival. So if we can go to that, that would be wonderful. On February 5th, St. John's Episcopal Church on Lido Island has a black history service at 10 a.m. And that's going to have a youth gospel choir, uh, African dance, African drumming, and um, modern dance as well during that church service. And I believe they have a guest speaker coming in from the East Coast to speak. Uh, that's African American as well. Um, February 7th, now this, this is not necessarily uh, black history uh, thing I'm going to share, but it's wonderful for us all to attend. It's the Creative Edge Lecture taking place February 7th, 10 a.m. at the Irvine Barclay Theater. Again, everything I'm sharing is free, by the way. Let me highlight that, free. <laughs> uh, but this is a wonderful lecture. The woman that's going to be speaking is actually the Arts Commission, I believe, for the National Endowment of the Arts. So it would be wonderful for us to attend that or share this information with others. Um, Disneyland for the whole month of 
February is Black History Month, so they have different wonderful artists and musicians performing and singers. And uh, I have a couple more. Uh, Orange County Black Chamber of Commerce on February 21st is doing their gala, and that will be at the Grove in Anaheim, and that will be uh, most likely on 11. 30 or so, it'll be their noon luncheon, so it'll go until most likely about 1.30. And uh, Santa Ana College for the month of February has several different events, but I thought it was really interesting that February 28th at noon, they're having a community talk with African American leaders. Uh, the H Huntington Beach Council member Rhonda Bolton will be speaking, the Tustin Council member Leticia Clark Costa Mesa council member and judge Karen L. Robinson will be speaking on, on the 28th at uh, Santa Ana College. So those are the things that I have to share and I just thought we should as artists celebrate these things and um, hope we can all get out to those. Thank you very much, Com Vice Chair Wondercheck. Commissioner Mann. Um, hi, so um, I went recently to the West Side Museum, which I didn't know there was one. <laughs> and um, it says a creative space. And I just noticed that it was on um, Instagram, which I'm not really on a lot. My, my sister and my daughter are all over it. And um, they had a Banksy town exhibit. And it's like literally this world tour that was going all around. And I had no idea about it, hadn't heard anything about it. Um, and it was such a, I thought, world-class event. It was done so well and so nicely. And it's one of these spaces that is um, like this great black box. And they have a stage there. I know they're a for-profit. I'm sure they'd love to somehow figure out how to do other things. They have to be a for-profit now in order to pay for everything. But um, they're also the owners of that. I believe the owners of the Boathouse Collective. And they're a restaurant kind of venue also that has art and music. And they've closed and they're reopening soon. Um, but I just wanted to kind of put them on our radar um, as far as, I mean, it was, I've been to a lot of shows in New York and LA and, and um, in other countries. And it was just amazing. And I thought, wow, this is in this little section right down the street from my house. And I had no clue it was there. And I was... Um, kind of saddened by that, but then also like, oh, it's this really cool underground kind of vibe going on, and, and I just really want to see more of that happening. And then I talked to the owners of this space and um, about how they got there and how they had applied for it to be there and to come through their location, and it was just like a three-day thing. It was so quick. Um, but it's like making Costa Mesa, you know, the city of the arts. It's just like that's exactly what the owner and I were talking about. And um, he's very interested. He didn't know we had an arts commission. I'm like, yes, we have an arts commission now in Costa Mesa. And um, so he's really excited because he is himself an artist as well. So I just wanted to bring that up and, and kind of let everyone know about it. And it's a great space. If you have any questions, I have a little brochure. Thank you, Commissioner Mann. S seeing no other comments by commissioners, any staff comments? I do. Director. First thing, um, I, it was reported, or at least it was uh, discussed during public comment at one of our last meetings about the, the Poderosos mural and the, the vandalism that had occurred. Um, I was pleased there was a, a news report that had gone out just this week, I believe, about that the suspect was, um, was caught. And so that's good. I mean, it doesn't excuse the, the vandalism, but it is good to know that the police tracked down um, the, the perpetrator and um, they have been... Um, I think they're going to court it sometime soon. But just to follow up on that, um, the city council study session that was mentioned earlier, I, I do encourage you to, to take a look if you haven't. There is a, you know, a pretty healthy staff report. It isn't focused just on the arts, but it was at a, a presentation that was put together by our entire department talking about you know, all of the, the, the problems, not the problems, the, the programs that we run along with some of the challenges which really lie around staffing uh, and then capital projects that are, that are pending. Um, not arts related at this time, but this is kind of the process that you know, would be great for you to get familiar with. Um, but I do thank our staff that put together that presentation. It ended up being about 
three-hour uh, city council study session, which is always great when we can talk about parks, recreation, and the arts in front of the council for that long. So um, please check that out if you haven't. It was at the, the first meeting in February or in January. Um, you should be able to, to get through that video. Um, if you have any questions about that, let staff know and, and we can follow up on them. Um, but it is very exciting, but there are gonna be some asks from our department, especially in the terms of part-time salaries and, and project management as we embark on a lot of these programs. So that was it for me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any other staff comments? All right, seeing none, then um, we will adjourn our meeting to March 2nd at 6 p.m. Thank you.